Welcome to the CBS Eye on Money podcast. It is Tuesday, November 23rd. And Mark, um, what's the game plan? Are you going to come up to the Upper West Side and are we going to go watch the balloons get inflated? Yeah, we are doing that. We're going to be there on Wednesday. I've I've researched it. I looked into it. There's like a eight or nine block path that you can walk through with the little ones and okay. uh, see all the balloons. So we'll all be right. up there probably, best guess, probably around three o'clock. Okay. I might want to meet you. What about, are we going to do a meal? Should I make a reservation someplace maybe? <laughs> Uh, possibly. I haven't thought that far in advance. I didn't even realize you guys were around. Yeah, we're going to be around. We're going to be here that night. Maybe we'll just like go get pizza or something. L- let me tell you, I haven't had a slice in a long time. Why? Because Amanda's not a big pizza person. Um, <gasps> Did you hear that gasp? <gasps> what? <laughs> yeah. I mean, she'll eat it, but it's got to be a very particular style. She won't, you know, traditional uh, slice that you're thinking of, she won't like. Really? She, she likes very like Thin, thin crust, you know, kind of burnt on the edges. Uh, all right. You know what I'm thinking? I'll talk to you about this after we get off the program. I think maybe I make an early reservation someplace and it'll be Italian where we can do a little bit of everything and he'll love it. The boy. What about is that place on the, I used to go to this place all the time up there. Uh, Salomaria. Is that still around? Oh yeah. That's great. But that's not oh, a God. Theo place. I know. I forgot Theo's going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking Parm. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. That that could be good. I'm going to go investigate this. I'm not clearing this with my spouse. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. All right. Now, listen, this is the program that takes the mystery out of your financial life. I am Jill Schlesinger. I am your host. He is Mark Talercio. He is your co-host. And um, we're both certified financial planners, which is great because we like to use that designation to help you with your financial issues. They don't have to be huge issues. They can be sort of generalized issues. But meanwhile, if you want to come join us on the program, all you need to do is hop onto the website, jillonmoney.com, click the contact button, write us your note, and let us know if you want to come on the air. Mark will do everything else. That's what Caitlin did. Caitlin is on the line from New Jersey. Caitlin, you've got some good pizza in Northern Jersey, right? Oh, we definitely do. If you go into the the greatest pizza of the world. What are you looking for? The thinnest crust? Are you a Sicilian fan? Do you like traditional? What's what's your uh, your fave? I don't discriminate. I'm open to everything pretty much, I would say. But Really? Yeah, the typical traditional, you know, New York style pizza is, is the go-to for for me. All right. I'm with you. I like the go-to also. I mean, I I do like a fantastic corner slice of Sicilian but I'm very particular. It's very difficult to find a good slice of Sicilian because it's either too fat and too doughy. It has to be crispy. It has to have great sauce. So it's the whole, the composition of a slice of, of uh, Sicilian is tough. All right. You're the guest today, Caitlin. What's on your mind? What can we do for you? So I have a couple questions about our retirement planning now. Um, very recently married. So I want to make sure that we're on the right track. And okay. then a question about a expected big change in our financial picture in a couple years time. All right. So how old are you, Caitlin? I'm 26, almost 27. Uh Uh, Married a couple months ago to my high school sweetheart. Really? Yeah. We've been together for 11 years. since. Oh my gosh. Did you grow up in New Jersey also? Yeah. I grew up in New Jersey, um, you know, lived kind of close to each other and started dating when we were 14. Oh my God. This is the second time, Mark. We had that other guy who was from, I think, North Carolina or South Carolina. One of these people with their high school sweethearts. How old is your sweetheart? Also 26 going on 27? Exactly. Same age. What's going on now? Do you do you, do you live in New Jersey? Do you own? Do you rent? Um, so his parents gave us a really nice setup. I have to give it to them. Partially as an investment property, they decided to purchase a co-op in kind of an up-and-coming town. Mm-hmm. And the deal with them is we pay for the monthly HOA fees and expenses. So we That's pay it? a whole $900 a month. <gasps> Ooh, how big a place is this? It's a one bedroom, but it's larger than most rentals. So I'd say it's probably about 800 square feet. Nice. That's great, though. And you're both working? We're both working. Um, I'm an engineer. Um, I pull in around $110,000 a year. Mm-hmm. My husband has a finance degree, and yet I'm the finance person in the household. So it happens. It always makes me laugh. Ended up deciding he didn't want to work a desk job, and he is working with his father. So he's self-employed, 
and they do general contracting. Oh, how much does he make from that? So currently he's around 40,000, you know, it, it kind of comes and goes. And that's mm -hmm. part of my question looking forward is he will be taking over the business in a couple of years and making much, much more money. When you say much, much more, do you have any idea about the quantification of that? Yeah. So what we've been talking about is, you know, eventually he'll be making hopefully at least what his dad does, which mm -hmm. is somewhere around 200 to 250. Um, when he takes it over, we'll probably have his dad on as kind of like a consultant for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, definitely want to make sure he has his feet under him and he isn't going to drive the thing into the ground. <laughs> um, so, I, love the, I love the vote of confidence there. What do you think, Mark? Uh, luckily, you know, we'll see if he drives it into the ground. But <laughs> I don't think he will. Um, all right. I just want to make sure that he has his, has it all, you know, he has a good handle on it. Yeah, um, makes sense. So I kind of am assuming that when he takes it over, paying his dad some money, he'll probably be making around 140000 But So that when you think, you were, oh, let's just look at the future. Are we talking about like two, three, five years from now? What, what's the, give us the uh, kind of the trajectory that you see. So, you know, next year is 22. Will he make the same forty grand next year? He'll probably make like 55, I would say. Okay. And now let's go to 2023. What do you think? It'd probably jump up to like 65. Mm -hmm. and, and now at that point he'll take over. I see in 2024. Okay. And then it's like 140, say for 2024, or 25. And then in 26, we're going to say 200 to 250. Yeah. Okay. I gotcha. Great. Fantastic. Does your father-in-law, like, does he have a retirement plan? Is it just the two of them? Is this some big, huge company? Like what's, what's the deal? No, it's just the two of them. Um, they currently don't have any employees, really. Um, mm -hmm. I think grand scheme, you know, big plan is later on down the line. My husband would like to have employees. His dad mm -hmm. still does a lot of the manual labor. And I don't think my husband wants to be doing that when he's, you know, 55, 60. Yeah, looks, it looks kind of hard, especially when you see it uh, close up, right, with your dad. So we get all the benefits come through your job, right? Yes. Okay. What's the game plan with this co-op? Is it that you stay in this till for the near future? What What's the the hope in the next few years? We'll stay here until we buy a house, super high cost of living area. So, you know, even a starter house around here is probably around $500,000. Mm. Um, so, yeah, we'll stay here until we have a good chunk of money saved up for a down payment. Although you could get a fixer upper because you actually have a contractor in your midst yeah, the hard part is getting him to do that work when he gets home from actual work. <laughs> I like that. Tell us a little bit about the money that you have saved and how much you're contributing to your retirement account. We both max out our Roth IRAs. I started out my Roth IRA when I was in college. I had a couple extra grand lying around, decided to throw it at, at that. My husband, on the other hand, just started his at my insistence. Uh, so in our Roth IRAs together, we have about 33000 and, you know, we'll, we'll probably max that out every year until we hit the income limit. Okay, great. Um, I have a really great 401k plan at work. Um, so I put 8% of my salary into a traditional 401k, and we recently got a Roth option. So I put 5% of my salary into that. My company match is great. They put 50% uh, of the first 8%, so, you know, 4% basically of my salary. But we also get a 7% they call it a discretionary contribution every year. So they give me 11% of my salary pretty much Holy every year. Holy crap. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, wow. it's it's really awesome. So my 401k balance is about $70,000 now. I've been working okay. for, for three years. Great. Fantastic. What about the emergency reserve fund? Um, I've been beefing it up. So I'm at about 25000 emergency fund. And mm -hmm. with our monthly expenses being around 4000 I feel pretty comfortable with that. Any other investments outside of retirement, the two Roths and your um, Roth 401k and your traditional 401k, anything else that's out there? Yeah, we have about 18000 total in various taxable accounts. And what about debt? Student loans or credit cards or auto loans, anything like that? Uh, so I do have a car loan. My husband does not. I decided to splurge and get a fun car. Wait, um, what? What'd you get? I, I got a Mustang. You are really a Jersey girl. <laughs> you know, you're really just playing into the stereotype right now. It's funny. I don't <laughs> consider myself to be that stereotypical Jersey, but my husband's a big car guy. He drives a, a beat up truck for work. So, you know, he really twisted my arm and we decided to get a fun car. Okay. What's the car loan that's outstanding? How much? Uh, it's about 23000 
And what is the interest rate on it? It's like 2%. Oh, all right. Cheap. Good. Yeah. All right. Good. Anything else? No, no student loans or anything? Uh, no. So my parents were great. They paid 100% for my very, very expensive college education. Mm-hmm. And when the opportunity arose for me to stay on for another year to get my master's degree, mm-hmm. uh, they struck a deal with me and they paid for it all up front and I paid them back for 50% of it. So I have like two more months left to pay them and I'm done. Hey, I like that. Mark, that's an interesting idea. Pay for it in advance. Yeah. Like here's the money. Go for it, but you're going to pay us a certain amount back. So your parents are in good financial condition, right? Yeah, I think so. I try and make sure that they're a little bit more conscious about their retirement. They emphasize the education for all of us a lot and got us all through college debt-free, which obviously we're all very grateful for, but that does come at an expense. Mm, Yeah, right. That's interesting. But for now, you don't have to worry about taking care of them, right? No. No. And what about your father-in-law? I don't know if your um, husband's parents are still married, but like everything okay? Like they've been making a lot of money for a while, but are they, you feel like they're okay? They can take care of themselves? Yeah, I think everything's okay there. Uh, She's a municipal uh, employee, so she has a pretty decent pension, I think. Oh, that's great. um, And has great health insurance and she'll keep working for a while, so. All right, that's great. Anything else that I need to know? Did I miss anything else? We have another little stash of money set aside that we're starting to save up for a house down payment. But, you know, like I said, that house is going to be expensive. So it's definitely a while down the road, but starting to sock some money away towards that every month. Okay, great. So the down payment fund. So what is the question that we can help you out with today? So my first question is that the Roth 401k option recently became available to us in the last year or so, you know, and I'm putting 5% in right now. Do you think I should be going in 100% based on listening to you guys every day? I'm assuming you guys are going to say go all in on the Roth, but wanted to hear that confirmation. I think yes for right now, Um, especially while your husband is still making, you know, 40 or 50 or 60,000. Like certainly I think for the next few years while you're still in a tax bracket that is mostly 22%, I think that we'll have a different decision when he starts making big, bigger dollars, because you do live in a high tax state, New Jersey, and it may be that perhaps it's worth your while to, you know, maybe do some pre-tax. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see what the tax laws look like by then. But I think for now, yeah, I would go all Roth all the time. Mark, you agree? Yep. A Roth, uh, it's a young person's best friend for sure. It really is. And I think that you guys are going to end up making more money down the line. So certainly while you're still in this 22% tax bracket, I really, really encourage you to do that. So let's do that. That's easy. Okay. Roth, number one question answered. Next. So my next question is with that company match that we get, you know, that's like I said, a, a big chunk of my salary. I don't know how that works since it's my first time with the Roth 401k option. So if I have the option to put that either into my pre-tax or, you know, pay the tax and put it into my Roth option, should I also be putting that into the Roth? Yeah, they're going, you should ask your HR department because some companies, it's, it's very odd. There are some companies that will not match into a Roth. So, and, and it's a company by company decision. If you have the option, I'd rather all money go into Roth right now, but obviously it's their decision. So we'll, we'll wait to see what, what their rules are in their plan. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, that makes sense. More generally, do you think that we're off on the right start here with all of our finances? Dude, you're killing it. You're killing it. You are putting so much money away. I can't believe you're only 26, 27 years old. You know, you're really, I think, in great position to, you know, save more money. Obviously, what's going to happen here for you guys is that you have to be balancing the amount of money you save in retirement with the amount of money you need for that home down payment fund, or I don't know if you're going to have kids or something, but like you're going to need some cash on hand. So I wouldn't get yourself too nutty if at the, um, you know, three or four years from now, you're like, oh no, we make too much money. We can't do Roth contributions. That's okay. You're going to need to build up some cash anyway. And so I think that whether it's kids or house fund or whatever, don't worry about that so much because we do need you to have money outside of retirement to do the things you want to do. Yeah, that makes sense. We're definitely having, you know, I have internal struggles trying to figure out how to balance it because that down payment's going to be huge. 
We also know we're going to have some fertility costs in the near future, mm. um, which is obviously very expensive as well. Yeah, it's like, what do, is any of that covered by your insurance? I get some coverage. You know, it's all super unclear. It's all very complicated. So mm. we have, a, it's a baby slash house fund. And <laughs> we're going to see what we can get. Uh, we're going to freeze some embryos and just see how much it ends up costing and kind of go from there. Wow. So listen, in the near term, here's what I think the best, I, I mean, Mark, you might have a different um, approach to this. How much of the split should be retirement, non-retirement? How much do you have left over each month on a month-to-month basis, cash flow-wise? So after, um, you know, putting a thousand into our Roth, so we max that out each year, and whatever retirement money comes out of my salary and his salary, we have probably about twenty-two hundred dollars a month that kind of is there for us to do whatever we want. Okay, so let's do that. Free cash flow is twenty-two hundred dollars a month after they kind of tick off a lot of the big spending, saving. Uh, categories. Of the 2200 what should happen to it, Mark? I would keep it accessible based on what, what you're saying and what's going to be coming in, up in the future with uh, fertility treatments and a possible house. I would probably just continue saving that money. Me too. I would go crazy. I would be, I would be looking at that and saying, you know what? Let's bank that into the taxable account. You know, so let's call it the uh, down payment slash kid slash other stuff fund. And I would start trying to get that money accumulated. I mean, it's going to grow pretty quickly. Are you? Do you ever get bonuses? Not the seven percent um, discretionary retirement contribution, but do you get a, a lump sum bonus ever? So I do. It's not huge. Um, okay. I think it's like ten ish percent of my salary. Well, um, I mean that's ten, twelve grand. That's yeah. good. Yeah, my husband gets a little bit here and there too. Um, currently, if he sells a job and he signs the contract, he gets a cut of the profits. So I would say maybe. For him, every couple months, we get an extra couple grand. You know what I would do? I would take bonus money and then like that 2000 2200 and I would just start socking it away. And then what we might want to do is, again, as he starts, not maybe it's not this year, and maybe it's not 22, maybe it's not 23, but then in 2024, you guys will have lived on a lot less money and you're going to have the opportunity to put a lot of money away. And I would really use those years as the time to accelerate. And, you know, hopefully you're buying a house in 2025, 2026. That's great. And you'll have the money to do it. And we'll see where the market is at the time. But you'll be able to do this. You really will because you've got money and you're good savers. So I think that, you know, the idea that you're only spending a thousand bucks a month or $900 a month on your house uh, on your housing is huge, especially because you live in a high cost area. And if he all of a sudden starts making more money sooner than you expect, that's just going to accelerate the plan. So I think it's great. And listen, when he has this business and it's really his, then let's talk again, because we're going to want to discuss you know, what kind of retirement plan he's going to put in for himself or for future employees. And, you know, really what, what does the cash flow look like at that time? We'll have more information then, right? So, but I think you're in great, great shape. I really do. All right. So if you, like Caitlin, would like to join us here at the Eye on Money pod, all you need to do is go to our website. Just go to jillonmoney.com and you can click on the contact button. While you're on the site, you can actually follow our other broadcast, which is called Jill on Money. Subscribe there. And uh, please, if you wouldn't mind, leave us a rating or a review for this podcast. Go on over to Apple and do that for us. Uh, Mark Talercio is our co-host and executive producer. We are distributed by Viacom CBS. We drop episodes of Eye on Money every Tuesday and Thursday. Mark, are we doing a Thanksgiving drop or not? Uh, yes, we are. All right. Mark says we're doing a Thanksgiving show. Not live, obviously, but none of these shows are live. Please, please. It is an important week to be really feeling the gratitude to express your thanks to someone, to do something nice for someone else. Our mantra here at this program is curiosity, compassion, community. We'll talk to you on Thursday. Thanks for listening.